Hello and welcome to our today's biology lesson presentation. My name is Marita Kaira. Different people have different characteristics. Some are tall, some are short. Some have brown hair, others have black hair. You find that these characteristics are inherited by offsprings from their parents. So the study of these characteristics and how they are inherited from their parents is known as genetics. Now let's go on the board so that we write the definition of genetics. Remember we said genetics is the study of characteristics and how these characteristics are inherited from parents. Now, since we've given the definition of genetics, which is the study of characteristics, and how these characteristics are inherited by offsprings from their parents, we are now going to deal with the component of genetics, which is known as variation. So remember, today we deal with variation. Now, when you look at variation, like I told you, individuals are different. Others are short, others are tall. So what we are going to do first, let's define the term variation. Variation simply means differences in the expression of the phenotypes in organisms of the same species. So what you do now, we we'll look at some examples that we have. So with me here, I have a chart which will help us understand variation in human beings. So the first variation which we we'll consider, we we'll consider the color of the complexion. When you look at this girl, this girl is darker than this girl. So we find that uh, on this chart, some pupils here are darker while others are light. The other characteristic which we we'll consider, we we'll look at uh, sex. When you look at this chart, there are three boys. This one is a boy. Then when you look at the girls, the girls are six in number. We have this one, this one is a, a girl. So we have girls, we also have who? boys. So now we we'll look at examples of the variation in it plants. After looking at variation in human beings, we are now going to use bean seeds to explain variation in plants. When you look at these varieties of bean seeds, they are different in color. This variety is black in color. This one is yellow in color. This one is brown in color. Apart from the color, you find that this variety is striped. While this one is not striped, this one also is not striped. You find that this is a good example of variation in bean seeds. 
Apart from the bean seeds, we can also use mango leaves to explain variation in plants. With me here, I have two sets of mango leaves. When you look at this first set, the leaves are small. When you look at the second set, the leaves are big. So you find that these leaves are different in terms of size. These are small, these ones are big. So this also is a good example of variation in plants. There are two types of variation. So look at the two types of variation. The first one, we call it continuous variation. The second one is discontinuous variation. Let's now give examples of continuous variation. The first example is height. Another example is weight. The other example is color of complexion. So these are some of the examples of continuous variation. Now let's give examples of discontinuous variation. The first one is sex. The other one is blood groups. The other one is tongue loading. These are some of the examples of discontinuous variation. Now we are going to look are differences between continuous variation and discontinuous variation. The first difference is that continuous variation has intermediates between two extreme ends. As for discontinuous variation, it has clear-cut differences. So what I'll do, I'll now explain this point, which is written that uh, has intermediates between two extreme ends. You will find that in a given class, you have shortest girls and boys at one end. You also have the tallest girl or boy at one end. So the shortest girl or boy and the tallest girl or boy, these are the two extreme ends. Then between the shortest and tallest boy, you are going to have boys and girls who are average in terms of height. So they will be found in between the tallest and the shortest. So these average boys and girls they are the ones we are calling intermediates. The furthest end this side, we have the shortest boy or girl. The other side, the extreme end, we also have the tallest boy or girl. But in between the shortest and the tallest, we might have boys and girls who are average in terms of whom? height. That's why we are saying that continuous variation has intermediates between to extreme ends. Remember, we said that height is an example of continuous variation. Now, on discontinuous variation, we gave an example. We gave sex as an example. Under sex, we have male. We also have female. People can just fall under the two groups in terms of who? sex. Some are males, some are females. You will never find an individual who is found between female and male. You are either a male or a female. So that's why we are saying that discontinuous variation has clear-cut differences. Male is different from female. You are either a male or female. When we 
come to blood groups. When we come to blood groups, we have blood group A. We also have blood group B. We also have blood group AB. We also have blood group O. If you are in blood group A, you can A, we cannot be found between blood group A and blood group B. Or found between blood group B and blood group A. You are either in blood group A or B. Or you can be in blood group A, B or O. So that's why we are saying discontinuous variation has clear cut differences. The other difference is that continuous variation is affected by the environment that is controlled by several genes. While discontinuous variation is genetical and is not affected by the environment. Not affected by the environment. And it is controlled by few genes. Let me explain this point. We'll give an example of complexion. Nowadays, very few ladies are dark in complexion. The complexion can easily be changed. You can change the complexion by using lightening creams, like Diprozo. So that's why we are saying the environment can affect complexion as an example of continuous variation. So in other words, we are saying variation, which is continuous variation, is affected by the environment. Very few ladies this time are dark in complexion. Most of them appear brown, but they are not actually brown. They have breached their faces. They have applied lightening creams. When you consider discontinuous variation, when you are born a male, you will remain a male. Even when you go to America, you will still be male. Whether you use Diprozo, you will still remain a male. Therefore, discontinuous variation is not affected by the environment. It's genetic, meaning you inherit this from your parents. When you are born male, you still remain male. Wherever you go, you will be male. If you are female, you remain female. Wherever you go, you are going to be female. The other difference is in terms of graphs. Continuous variation forms a normal distribution curve. For a discontinuous variation, we use a bar graph. We are going to plot a graph showing continuous variation here. We are also going to plot a graph showing discontinuous variation there. So we are going to start with continuous variation. With continuous variation, we've given height as an example. So we are going to use this information shown in this table. Imagine that this is a class of grade 12. Height is in meters. Then the other one shows number of pupils. When the height is 1.1, the number of pupils who have 1.1 meters in terms of height is zero. When height is 1.2, the number of pupils is zero. Height 1.9, number of pupils one. Height 2.0, Number of pupils is zero. So let's plot a graph. So when plotting a graph, this side we should have number of pupils. This side we should have height in meters. Remember the information that we are going to use is coming from the table below. So now let's start plotting a graph. When height is 1.1, the number of pupils is zero. 
So when one uh, height is 1.1, 1 .1, height is 1.1, it's this point. Then the number of pupils is zero, it's the same point. So this point shows that when height is 1.1, 1 .1, the number of pupils is zero. The next point is when height is 1.2, the number of pupils is zero. So when height is 1.2, the number of pupils is zero, it's this point. When height is 1.3, the number of pupils is 1. So this point shows that this is 1.3. The number of pupils 1, it should be somewhere here in the middle. When height is 1.4, the number of pupils is 4. So this is 1.4, this is where 4 is. So this is a point. When height is 1.5, the number of pupils is 10. So this is 1.5, 10 is somewhere here. When height is 1.6, the number of pupils is 20. So this is 6, then 20 is here. When height is 1.7, the number of pupils is 12. So 1.7 and 12 is this point. Then we have 1.7, we have 12. Then we are going to 1.8, which is 4. 1.84 is this point. Then 1.9 is 1. So this is 1.9. 1 is in the middle there. Then 2.0, which is this point. Then we have 0. So what you do next is you join these points. So let's join the points. So we are joining the points. So when you look at this graph, it is showing a normal distribution in K. So in other words, we are saying continuous variation shows a normal distribution K. So this is a normal distribution K. So when you see a normal distribution K, then you know it's continuous variation. Then we are going to plot a graph showing discontinuous variation. So this graph will be for discontinuous variation. Then the example 